Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're welcome. That case is really messy. Your foundation, buddy. Oh, my God. I'm like, I can't that bullshit. Okay. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, this is the January 7th meeting of the City of Moorhead Economic Development Authority. Uh, let's do roll call. Amy, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members present today include Michael Burns, Heidi Durand, Charlie Johnson, Wyatt Johnson, Pat Kovash, John Rogala, Bobby Soline, and Marsha Weber. Okay. Thank you. Are there any amendments to our agenda? Anyone want to make any changes to the agenda? Okay. Moving on. We need uh, to approve our minutes from the December 3rd, 2018 meeting. I would entertain a motion unless there's some discussion. So moved. Michael moved. Marsha seconded. Any further discussion about the minutes of December 3? All in favor say aye. Aye. Citizens so uh, opposed? Same sign? Motion carried. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, do we have any citizens addressing the board on any topic that is not on the agenda? I only see Sherry out there, so she's shaking her head. So, okay, we're moving on. Commissioner's report. Let me start by welcoming our new member, Bobby Soline. Maybe we could take, she can give a report about herself for a minute or two. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, John, can you help her with the microphone? Just tip it down a little. There you go. Hi. I'm Welcome, Bobby. Thank you. Um, I'm a real estate agent at Town & Country Realty. Uh, I have three children and a husband and uh, one grandchild, and I'm very excited to be on this committee. All right. Well, welcome to the team. It's good to have you here. Okay. Any other commissioner's reports? Commissioner Kovash. Quick MBA report here. Um, in our Let's Talk Business tomorrow morning at the frying pan, we have the FM Science Museum project. Uh, that should be interesting. Our 560 Connect is going to be Thursday at 5 o'clock at the Thai Orchid for an hour. So if you uh, have, need something to do after work, you can stop out there. Um, we do have, we do have a, a snow sculpture competition that's going to be part of the Frostival. Um, our golf tournament, we've sat the date for May 23rd at the Meadows Golf Course. So put that on your schedule. I know there's usually a lot going on. We decided to have it earlier than later this year because it seems like the later we have it, the tougher <coughs> time we have getting everybody to pencil it in. And then, of course, we're going to have our, um, our 4th of July, our annual fireworks celebration. And Sherry just came from our first meeting. So uh, that's always exciting. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity. We met with our new mayor, Mr. Judd, and uh, had some very interesting uh, conversations and uh, and just kind of let him know that the that the MBA is here and that uh, that we're here to help, and that and that you know it, to to try to emphasize to him that we're a nonpartisan organization and that we're not R's and D's, we're M's, we're for Moorhead. And we're for what's best for Moorhead, and uh, it was really nice to have him there. He was very receptive, a very good listener. Uh, if you get a chance, I encourage you to walk up and talk to him. You you will be pleased. And um, I had a couple weeks ago too. I had an opportunity to attend the city workshop, and I know that's on our event, so we'll touch on that later. That the that Chris and the staff put on, uh, very informative, and then. Um, one thing for you, Charlie, I just, you know, the, we have the state of the cities happening tomorrow. And I know we used to get tickets for the, the Did EDA we? used to have stuff out there so we could attend that. And I just think it would be great to have, no? Okay. Um, I know we did. And, you know, last year it kind of got missed. And I think it got missed this year too, Commissioner. Yeah. Well, I I just think it's it's one of them events that you know even if we did that, I think we need to go out of our way to make sure that our commissioners are atten attending that and making a presence for Moorhead there. It's it's usually a great event. It has all the mayors there, and there's just lots of information. And I I really enjoyed it when I went. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dan, would anybody like to attend? And I'd be happy to take care of that. I mean, I certainly would. No, we can. I'm already attending. Yeah. A, a lot, of, a lot of people here <laughs> attend it 
maybe through a different venue. Yeah, yeah. But, so you know, for business. me, it would be the EDA or or the Moorhead Business Association. But Manager Volkers, would you like to say something? About yeah, that? Mr. Chair, um, we can certainly try to get a table at this point for the EDA. I was not aware that that had happened in the past. So um, I don't believe we had a table. Oh, you just had. We just uh, attended and okay. just sat randomly with okay. with people that we knew. Dan's right. We can absolutely um, sign you up for those of you. I think so far just. So let's check it. Let's see how many people would take advantage tomorrow morning if the EDA uh, were to buy Thursday, 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 morning, Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Uh, Thursday morning if the EDA bought tickets. How many people would like to go but don't currently have a ticket? It, I think it's from 8 to 9.30 oh, a.m.? No, 7.30, I think. At 7.30? I'm not sure. Nine. I thought it was 7.30 to 9. It's a breakfast meeting. I have eight starts at 8 o'clock. Yeah, sorry. Starts at 8. Okay, 8 to 9.30. So anyone, is there anyone... Go ahead, raise your hand, Pat. <laughs> Don't be shy now. <laughs> okay. It's at the Holiday Inn. It's at the Holiday Inn. So only Pat. So And if you're interested, reach out to Amy or myself, and we can make sure we forward it along to Dan and Chris or try to yeah. get that inclusion. Probably by the end of the day today, though, just to make sure we get a ticket. Can you get a ticket for Pat? Yep, I'll reach and if out anyone to else wants okay. one, you know, probably we should know by tomorrow early afternoon, right? Yeah. I assume there are t still tickets available. It might be hard to get a table at this point anyway, but yeah. <clears throat> yes, and, and I think you know Pat just brought that up before the meeting started. I think um, I think that is something that we should keep in consideration for other kind of larger events that are more community related because. Um, I mean, one for, for myself that I've been attending more of these lately, I don't think there's been a, a large Moorhead presence in the past, so it would be important to, to show our, uh -huh. our faces and, uh, and be community leaders for, for what we do here. You might want to make a note of it for the uh, uh, EDC's annual report, yep. annual meeting. Absolutely. That would be something to make a note of, so one of you guys can find out when that is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Anything else, Pat? Nope. No. John. More of a question. Um, Commissioner Rogala, I'm sorry. Thank you. Try to be formal as I wind up my life here. <laughs> not, not needed for me. <laughs> Just for an update, uh, back in August we got a letter from a developer and wanted to meet with the EDA uh, with Rick Jordan. Yes. Rick Jordan. Yes. Has that happened or what's, what's the status? Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Shockley and Ms. Volkers and I met with Rick and his lawyer and another person. And uh, John is working on some questions that were raised. Um, don't ask me to recite them, <laughs> but maybe John could give you a little timeline anyway on that. But we had a meeting uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I think it was sometime. Correct, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we met with Mr. Jordahl and his attorney, uh, and we went over a uh, couple of issues regarding uh, his questions related to his TIF district. Uh, those included, he had some questions about whether or not a valuation agreement could be put in place for his TIF agreement or for his TIF property. One of the challenges associated with that is probably the largest property valued within that TIF district is the hotel and convention center. And when the developer sold that property to the hotel, they did not include any type of agreement between the two parties that that hotel would not challenge its valuation, which is pretty common for a developer in a TIF district when they transfer it to a third party is to say, you will not challenge your valuation because the developer is trying to pull money out of the TIF district. So that's one challenge. We talked about some of the issues about what he, he would be suggesting or could suggest to increase the valuation out there with vertical construction. Uh, he was talking about bringing something back. We also discussed the possibility of perhaps refunding some of the bonds in the TIF district. Uh, we have that under review right now. One of those bonds paid off, but because of the way, uh, the type of TIF bond it was, uh, it's not really gonna add any additional revenue to the TIF because it gets paid off and then it's done. <coughs> um, and so we're checking about the other uh, TIF bond. Uh, and then we just kind of in general talked about you know, if the city was or EDA was able to do anything that could assist him in his development, they said that, you know, and you've probably heard this many times, the city has sort of a new perspective in that, you know, we'd like to talk to you about what your proposal is and see how we can assist you in that. And 
really, I don't know what, if anything, to be frank, that he'll be bringing back. But we did we did leave the door open for additional development, uh, additional zoning changes, for higher density growth. Um, we'll probably be meeting back with him and his attorney relatively soon because we're finishing up some of the the research because it's really kind of some technical issues about how much the TIF district is producing. So. So when we have some more answers, we'll bring them back to the EDA. Thanks for asking. Mr. Koma. Charlie, one quick correction. Our, our Let's Talk business, that meeting is not tomorrow morning. It is Wednesday at 7. <coughs> so, so you're gonna you're be totally confused there. about what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's all right. I get that way Thank frequently. You. Okay. Any other commissioner reports? Anyone? No? Okay. Derek? Yeah, I'll, Economic development report. I'll get right into it, Mr. Chair. So um, you'll kind of see a little bit different format for this month because um, we'll get to the, the annual report that I put together for, for downtown Moorhead, Inc. But just a few highlights from uh, this past month. Um, at the last EDA meeting, we had um, a developer come in from Epic uh, that talk about the 4th Street lot. So as a reminder, this is the lot that's just to the, the west of the U.S. Bank building here in downtown off of Center Avenue. It's a surface parking lot. Um, the city did officially list or notice that property for sale um, before, before Christmas. Um, that notice basically says if uh, interested developers uh, have a proposal or want to explore a development uh, on that site, that they should contact um, Amy and myself or the city. Uh, to kind of go through there and, and get it in. That ends, that notice ends at the end of January. Uh, so far, uh, I've had a couple of just conversations with some developers that just have seen it or have heard about it. Um, at this point, um, I don't think they're interested in putting in a, in a proposal. Uh, and I've just had a couple just citizens from Moorhead just ask questions about it, but nothing, again, that I, I would expect somebody putting in a proposal. But. Um, if uh, if nobody else comes forward, uh, Epic companies will be um, submitting a, a proposal. At that point, um, we'll have further conversations about process moving forward uh, of if the city does want to sell that particular piece of property. So that's uh, the update on the 4th Street lot. Uh, we did have a meeting, Amy and myself, uh, I think Dan and, and Chris were there for a little bit with West Central Initiative. Uh, they are the ones that manage our Moorhead Loan Fund. So uh, this was something that I didn't really know much about until a few months ago. Um, but there's about $900,000 or so of Moorhead's money in this loan fund. Uh, it's a little bit different than the standard um, loan funds that you see across the state of Minnesota where there's been state contribution. This is, this is solely Moorhead's money. Um, but this was, a, again, a very productive meeting, trying to find out more about how we can use that loan fund. It really hasn't been utilized much in the past. Um, we also felt that there was an opportunity just to kind of rekindle a relationship there. Uh, there's quarterly meetings that um, kind of the region um, meets with a bunch of different economic <laughs> developers. So myself and Amy, uh, or both of us will try to attend those quarterly meetings. They have the deed representative, David Heyer, that was up a, a number of months ago. Uh, he, he goes to those meetings. So it was a, a really, I think, good meeting that we had with West Central um, and, uh, and, and seeing if we can kind of utilize some more tools for, for our benefit here in Moorhead. Um, the Folkways group, so I thought this was just um, something interesting for the, the, the board to know about. And this is, uh, Folkways is a kind of a community-based organization. They run the Red River Market and, and some other events, uh, mainly in Fargo, but they, they have a, a really strong interest in, in doing stuff in Moorhead. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with them. They're talking about bringing an indoor food market uh, to Moorhead, whether that's at the Yumcoms or the mall. We've kind of looked at some different options. Uh, in the beginning of February and beginning of March, um, you know, up to 5,000 people that could come right into our downtown. So a huge event with um, hopefully a lot of people being able to come into our downtown and, and utilize our shops and restaurants as well. Um, the next one is is kind of the the meat of it all, but this business retention and expansion program it was um, listed in your month in my monthly report last month that I wasn't able to attend, um, but this is. Uh, this is a big deal, I think, moving forward in, in 2019. I've been kind of doing this for my role in, with Downtown Moorhead, Inc., is going out and, and getting the pulse of the, the business community. So 
and not just the business community, but the development community. We also talk to financial institutions, you name it. But it's, it's having these regular um, kind of frequent meetings. And it doesn't have to be with the same people every time, but at least you're going out and being active in, in, in talking to these developers and, and businesses and figuring out what the challenges and what the problems are that they face or what's, what, what we're doing well. Uh, and this can really tailor our, our work plan. Um, the Greater Fargo-Moorhead EDC, Joe Ray, Rayso, has, um, has been talking about getting some kind of regional software um, that could house a lot of this information. You know, we can certainly do it internal, but West Fargo, uh, Fargo, Moorhead, and the EDC could all use this, this software platform. Um, and if the EDC is going out and talking to a, a primary sector business like American Crystal Sugar in, in Moorhead, um, they could have that information. There could be privacy settings that we could figure out as you know, city staff or myself, uh, figure out how that meeting went, what they talked about. Uh, and we can also have some key indicators of data that we want to capture. And, and really, how I view it is, um, you know, for us to be successful, we need to have the right measures. We need to have the right data to, to be able to, to figure out how we move forward. Um, so this is a really big component that I really want to hit the ground running with in 2019. And uh, I, I don't think I can do this on my own. I've been talking with Amy quite a bit and, and Chris and Dan. And um, I, I would really like to involve the EDA uh, at some point as we get more information, whether that's attending um, some of these visits, whether it's, you know, one or two or um, however many that would have the time. Uh, I'd like to set, you know, a goal of maybe having a meeting once a week, so maybe four meetings a month. You start just kind of tackling this piece by piece. Um, but a lot of the, the businesses that I spoke to um, that have been in this community for a long time, they haven't had really any interaction with the city and the last time was when they got their building permit. So, I mean, it's just, this is an important piece to really figure out um, how we develop our work plan. I think it's important information for the EDA to understand so we make good, solid decisions for our, for our residents here. So that's a, that's a big piece of it. Um, Pat mentioned this, and, and the MBA is going to have the uh, Fargo-Moorhead Science Center. Um, there's a, a group that uh, has formed. They have a nonprofit that has, has been formed. Um, I met with them uh, individually and then brought them to, uh, to Chris and Dan to have a, a more formal meeting with the city. Uh, it's a really kind of um, a regional approach of trying to get this, this science center. Uh, I think it's a, a fantastic idea. I think it, it comes back to what do we want to become as a, as a community? Do we want to you know, embrace just residents or restaurant des destination or we entertainment. I think it's just a good conversation to have, but um, they're pretty early in the process. They're, they're still at a, a point of just kind of formulating a lot of different things. They're looking at um, taking over an existing bu uh, building. I don't think they're at a point to build unless they raise enough capital. Um, so there, there's some questions that still have to come out, but I'd be curious to see how, how it plays out, and we're trying to be accommodating as we can because I think it would be a, a, a cool thing to have in Moorhead that would really draw a lot of, a lot of families and, and students and, um, and be a regional center for, for us. Um, this kind of goes into, and this is just, I put it in here, and, and I think it, it really should be discussed, and Charlie, you probably have more, more to say on this one, but it's... Uh, uh, Fargo has, it's no secret, they started a performing arts task force. Um, I, I've said it from the start when I started at DMI in the beginning of March that I think Moorhead uh, would not be doing its citizens justice to at least explore the opportunity of, of having a performing arts center here in Moorhead. And that's not to say we need to figure out the cost or location or anything. I think it's just we need to have a, a conversation. Um, there's more state for arts and, and culture in the state of Minnesota than there is in North Dakota. There's, I mean, that's no secret either. Uh, so we, we do have the tools, and I think we have the ability to attract something and, and to really have something that's successful here. But we need to start that conversation. And, and I kind of threw it in here of saying, I, I mean, I don't know if this is a, a part of the EDA. I do think it spurs economic development. I think this, this art center would spur economic development, so I think there's a component to it. Um, but maybe there's a partnership here between the EDA and the Moorhead Arts and Culture Commission to assemble this type of task force and just start having a conversation. Um, I, I, I just think it, it's just sitting there. I mean, it's, it's up for grabs right now. Go ahead, Charlie. Well, the task force has had two meetings. I, I'm on the task force along with a number of other people. 
Um, currently, the task force itself narrowed the site to where the perform for the uh, civic auditorium is now. Sure. <clears throat> which is kind of what's driving this conversation because the city of Fargo wants to decide what to do with that quad. Now that they've got the new city hall, they tore down the old city hall, and the civic auditorium is is old. Mm -hmm. It's not as old as I am, but it's close. <laughs> And it's uh, so they want to see what the possibilities are there. So there, we have another meeting coming up this month. Um, I think the next step will probably be trying to get uh, some uh, some sort of architectural drawings and uh, cost estimates. But then also, there's going to have to be a uh, private component in addition to whatever funding the city can cobble together, which would probably be true in Moorhead too. Uh, so I think there might be some, there will be some discussion about hiring a firm to do a feasibility fundraising study. Sure. There's already a feasibility study been done showing that there is, there is a need for such a facility. But uh, so, you know, it's early. It's early, they're just starting. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, this is my personal opinion. It's just, I, I think funding is the big question mark. And I mean, the, with the diversion and other things that are coming up, I mean, I think it's, it's something that we should at least look into in, into Moorhead. So I'm open to suggestions. We can have conversations offline. Um, you know, I'm going to work with the planning department here in Moorhead who kind of facilitates the Arts and Culture Commission to see if there can just be a conversation there and, and, and see where it goes. So like I said, just wanted to put it out there. Um, you'll see on here some city council action. This is from the December uh, 10th. So we just have a little bit different format this month of just some of the things that went through city council. So you'll see uh, Trollwood Performing Arts uh, operating budget. There's the approval of the budget and tax levy for the EDA. Uh, we had uh, approval of the legislative um, kind of agreements for our, our uh, consultants on that. And then um, the agriculture leases in the Makara Industrial Park too uh, that went through. Um, Everybody should have seen uh, an email about an upcoming um, city council. This is a city council action. This is on uh, January 28th. So this is a, uh, a multifamily housing property tax exemption for Michael Clint. Uh, this is a construction of eight unit multifamily housing building located at 2622 Country Club Parkway. And uh, we'll, we'll get you more information as we get closer to uh, the tax, um, tax hearing at city council. Uh, we'll get into it in the next item about just the the roles and what comes to you. I just want to make sure there's clarity in that whole thing as well. Pat mentioned we had the city-owned um, kind of land and utilities uh, facilities meeting on, on December 12th of 2018. I thought it was a great meeting. Um, kudos to Amy and, and to uh, um, and our GS department here at the city. They did a fantastic job of going through all those parcels. Uh, thank you for those who were able to attend, but that's a ton of work that, that Amy and the GIS department did to, to put that together. And it's a tool that I think is going to be extremely helpful in, in uh, economic development as well. So uh, fantastic job on that. We're going to um, hopefully try to take that information and try to figure out what parcels uh, truly can be redevelopable and uh, what, what the city is willing to, to part with or sell. And I think it's a an opportunity to kind of really strategize on how we can really accelerate the growth for for our region. So um, one thing that's really neat about that tool too is it's a living tool. So rather than just a point in time where the GIS department or a map, as things change with ownership or in the community, that thing gets updated. So 24 hours. I mean, it's really an impressive piece of work. Uh, and so for those that weren't able to make it, if you'd like to do just a visit to check it out, we'd love to show it to you. Absolutely. Um, last thing on, on uh, the sheet here is uh, Amy and I will be attending the, the EDEM Economic Development Association of Minnesota Winter Conference January 23rd to the 25th in Minneapolis. So um, we got invited to this and uh, we've, been, we've been getting sent more opportunities to, to learn more from our, our state partners. So um, I can really feel that um, we've connected with a lot of those folks and we're getting some opportunities to really kind of have a presence for Moorhead at these, these events. So we'll attend and we can report back on how that goes. Okay, any questions for Derek on any of that? Mr. Regala. I was able to attend the meeting here that you summarized, and I think that would be valuable for that to be a summary. To send us what? I'm sorry. I would, I would suggest maybe a summary of that oh, yeah. to the EDA, as far as for everybody who had, had an opportunity to see that. You're talking about the city-owned city property properties. workshop? <clears throat> yeah. 
Okay, anything else? All right, let's move on to number eight, economic development incentives review and approval process. Back to you, Derek. Yeah, so um, again, thanks to, to Amy. She kind of summarized this, and I, I thought this was important just to go through. This was kind of a, uh, if you recall, we had a, a little get together a number of months back, just kind of talking about the role of the EDA and, and uh, moving forward with some different things. And, and I know there's been some, uh, in the past, uh, some EDA, EDA members have been kind of caught off guard when some things just go straight to council versus uh, when it comes to EDA. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, just have a, a sheet of paper that kind of summarizes some things, at least from an incentive standpoint of, of when the council's involved, when the EDA is involved. And um, again, thanks to Amy to putting this together. But what you'll see is the kind of the first block. You'll have um, what she's what, what we're titling property tax ex exemptions, which includes the commercial industrial property tax exemption, uh, which was just altered um, a, a couple months ago. You'll have the multifamily housing uh, residential um, uh, exemption, which is the one I, I mentioned in the economic development report, and then there's a restaurant exemption. Um, the these exemptions. The best way to describe it is they, they don't have uh, subjective criteria when you're reviewing it. They either meet the, the process or they don't. Um, and in the past, uh, that those type of projects have gone right to um, city council after staff has done their review, after they've, uh, they've summarized that they work with uh, the city assessor to kind of determine what their exemption rate would be. Uh, but those type of, of proper projects have They've been noticed to the EDA, but there hasn't been formal recommendation on the EDA because there is no, again, subjective criteria for the EDA to review. Um, where the EDA does get involved with is now in the process of the newly formed Renaissance Zone. We do have criteria. We have um, um, goals and objectives that we're trying to, to meet. So there is uh, a, a review and expertise of this board that, that we're going to be looking forward to to provide a recommendation to City Council. Um, same with uh, tax increment financing projects, so TIF financing projects. Um, these go through the EDA, and, and I think Amy did a good job of summarizing uh, on the second page here of, of when it goes to EDA and, and when it would go to, to council as well. So, I, I, again, just a very um, kind of brief summary of just the incentives. We'll continue to, to notice um, the EDA members here. We've been trying to do a better job of getting <coughs> you notice early, so you'll see an email from Amy. It's almost in a, in a table format. It's a, kind of a snapshot of, of what these exemptions would be. So uh, that January 28th one with the multifamily housing, uh, everybody should have seen just a, a quick you know, project title, applicant, um, what the exemption is, where they're located, um, just a quick highlight so nobody's caught off guard when it doesn't come to EDA. And, and we, we shouldn't have many issues, uh, but there will be sometimes, um, for example, say we have a, a project that comes into Amy tomorrow, um, and, and they may go to city council before we get to the EDA. Um, that's when that email blast is going to be important. Otherwise, if there's a meeting, an EDA meeting before the city council, you'll always hear it from me vocally, but you'll see the, the email as well before it goes in the paper. So any questions or um, comments on that? We're just trying to make it easy. The, the, the last um, piece you'll see here, I, I think this is great. Amy's done a great job. This is her organization of a start to finish of when a project uh, comes in or when the conversation starts having with a tax exempt project. This is all the checklist that Amy goes through with every individual project that comes in. So Amy's uh, extremely organized and done a great job with um, uh, just trying to keep everything up to date. So if you have questions on this, um, Amy will be certainly uh, glad to go through it with you. But uh, I, I think we've got a pretty, pretty great um, process right now. Uh, we're just making sure that uh, everybody's noticed and, and aware of all the, the things that are happening too. Okay. Any questions for Derek on that? Comments, questions? Okay. Thanks, Derek. Let's move on to uh, the resolution to consent to sale of 8th and Main LLC to Eventide. Who wants to handle that? I think John's going to take this one. Okay. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> this is a part of the agreement with uh, the Block E project as part of the developer's agreement. If the developer is going to be selling a portion of the property, 
uh, to a third party. Uh, it needs the consent of both the EDA and the city. Uh, we did receive as part of the uh, process a written waiver by Eventide that they would not be asking for a tax exempt status for the property. Uh, the development agreement had contemplated that if they were going to ask for a tax exempt status, there was a special procedure to buy to buy down the TIF. Uh, however, they elected not to do the tax exempt uh, process, and so that we've received the written waiver, and so they're just looking for the consent of the EDA and the city council to transfer uh, the second floor uh, to Eventide, uh, and this was contemplated in the agreement. Okay, any questions for John about that? So what you're saying is they will pay property taxes on it? Yes. That's the bottom line. But because of their nonprofit status, if they'd wanted to, they could have requested tax exempt status. Correct. And we wanted to make sure that they had waived the ability to ask for a tax exempt status because that would defeat the purpose of the TIF then. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, any questions, comments? Or motions approving uh, this resolution. Motions to approve the resolution. Marsha moved. Uh, I need a second before Dan can talk again. John seconded. Okay. Did you have some comments you want to make about this, Dan? Well, I just want to say it is going to the city council as yes, well. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we do goes to the city council. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Mr. Chair, I think I missed an item to number uh, seven, so if we can go back to that one, I'll, I wondered about I'll that. summarize yeah, okay. that. Yeah. I got ahead of myself. I put I a was... check mark by it, and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> did I doze off? Yeah, so um, downtown plan update. So um, just a couple things. This is going to be a pretty brief update. Um, but this is, uh, this is the latest. So we, we are defining a scope and that is kind of ever changing, but we're getting close to uh, a final definition of that. We're, we're really creating a, a vision for downtown. We're defining the area of downtown. Um, we're kind of uh, with that vision, you know, how do we move forward? How do we um, have our financing tools? How do we look at internal financing structures from the city standpoint to make sure that we can actually uh, facilitate this and implement some of the stuff? Um, but one thing that's really kind of um, moved forward with the plan is the incorporation of kind of dealing with some of the, uh, some are challenges, but some are opportunities. So uh, the power plant site uh, being one of them, and maybe even encompassing this downtown plan as a, a review and a public input opportunity could almost be an RFP process to try to facilitate some type of development on that. Um, the other thing is there's some components of the Center Avenue project. So that project is under construction next year from the river to A Street. Um, there's some landscaping elements. There's some kind of design elements of it. Uh, we'd really like to see, um, you know, a third-party consultant be able to come in and, and provide some expertise of what that should look like and correspond that with what our vision um, is for downtown, too. So, uh, and I think, you know, the elephant in the, in the room is how do you address the Moorhead Center Mall? Uh, and some of the um, the challenges that that comes with. We've had some good conversations with the, the mall ownership group or the majority ownership group. Um, they're open to that idea of having um, the mall be studied as a part of that, what some inputs are, um, again, what our tools are to help facilitate maybe some change or, uh, or to attract. Um, so that's kind of where we're moving with the scope and, and kind of with the schedule, the tentative timeline is, and this is coming from my uh, Downtown Moorhead Inc. board, is uh, we are going to notice um, an RFP or a, a request for proposals for uh, a third party consultant in the middle of January. So in the next couple of weeks, we will be noticing. I've had a tremendous amount of interest from, uh, from local and regional and a few national uh, organizations. Um, we'll start interviews, I think, uh, probably as soon as we can, but certainly by the start of February, we'll have, we'll have interviews underway. Uh, we'll be hiring a uh, third-party consultant hopefully by the middle of February, and we'll start that plan as quick as we can. So uh, mid-February to start of uh, March, we'll have the process well underway. We're trying to coordinate with some different um, um, public input and public uh, gathering opportunities. There's going to be one for, for Center Avenue with that project. We thought that was a good opportunity to kind of collaborate 
Um, we've been talking a little bit about having an economic development summit with a new council and mayor. Uh, there could maybe be some overlap with that in February. Um, you know, just for everybody's mindset, I mean, this process does take time as far as the completion of the plan with a lot of the public input. So I, I'd say at least a minimum of nine months is, is what we'll see from the start of hiring to when the plan is completed. Uh, we'll try to have some deliverables uh, maybe done beforehand, like with Center Avenue, for example, because that project will be underway in the summer. Uh, so we'll have some deliverables that will come out quicker. But um, again, huge opportunity for moving downtown. Again, we have tremendous uh, um, interest that we're having from the development community. And I think uh, we're at this, this crucial point to, to set a vision, to set some, some guidelines and some tools um, for, our, for our EDA board here, our, our elected official at the city council, uh, to really have some, some guidance on how we move forward. Center Avenue project, is that uh, 4th Street to how far east? Uh, it's actually, it encompasses the bridge to a degree. The uh, there's, it's not major repairs on the bridge. There's some, some joint kind of ceiling, um, so nothing too major on that. Uh, but so really from the bridge, from even the Fargo side, going all the way to A Street. To A Street, okay. Yep. Um, you know, a couple things to note on that too. I've had uh, a couple coordination meetings with the city of Fargo and, and, and just trying to create this collective feel of, you know, we, we are two downtowns, two cities, but we, <laughs> we have effects when somebody does road construction pro uh, projects. Uh, they will be undergoing Main Avenue construction next year. Uh, in August, they will have the Main Avenue Bridge closed. Uh, they will be constructing, uh, constructing actually a roundabout at 2nd Street and Main Avenue in Fargo. Uh, so that, that construction will actually um, take the bridge offline. So we've been working really closely with engineering. Um, MPS has a, a project as a part of this Center Avenue uh, with some of the water main uh, repairs. We're trying to collaborate at, at this point um, at no point in time during the construction project of Center Avenue, uh, there won't be a full closure. So there will be lanes open. Now, certainly, there may be maybe some brief times where there has to be a full closure. But at this point, no extended full closures. Um, and we're trying to, again, facilitate communications with Fargo and making sure that we have good traffic flows as we go through. I'm glad to hear you say that, because as a motorist, <laughs> I would like to say that closing both the Main Avenue Bridge and the Center Avenue Bridge at the same time would be a public relations nightmare. Yes. Yeah, so at, at least so. I yep. mean, people would have a right to be upset about that. That's, you know, I, I mean, I think we all drive around town during construction season and marvel at why they choose to do two parallel streets at the same time. And you, or they shift you to a detour, and then suddenly you got to do another detour. So mm. thank you for planning that. If you can avoid that completely, that would be great. Yeah. You well, said August the Main Avenue bridge was going to close? Yeah, August the Main Avenue, and at that point, um, all construction should, I mean, we're hoping, fingers crossed, weather and everything related, but everything on the Center Avenue bridge would be open. But again, at no point in time, the bridge would be fully closed. Um, for Center Avenue, but for if, Center but, Avenue. Yeah, but if Main Avenue is closed and Center Avenue is down to one lane each way, that's... It's still a fact. There. So yeah. the hope is that we would not have that scenario, but yeah. again... At, we're, we're in January with a lot of snow, and you never know how winter plays out here in the, in the north. So the Center Avenue project is going to start with the bridge then? Uh, actually, well, it depends. I mean, there's uh, the MPS component of it, I think, has to go first with their water main. So I think that goes first. But there's still a lot of collaboration between MPS and the city right now to see if they can do some things ahead of time. Uh, we're doing everything we can to, uh, to help facilitate a, a quick and, and smooth transition with this project. Okay. We're going to need hover cars. Ma'am? <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, Board, Derek, I'm back to the project plan. Um, first, we want to thank EDA for their um, generosity in donating $60,000 towards that downtown project plan. As you go through the RFP process in January, February, we are thinking or hearing that it may be a lot more expensive to do that. And I know we mentioned this the last couple meetings that, that there may be a request coming forward to EDA to help fund more of that. If it costs more, do we want to do it 
right the first time, and then if we do, where are we going to get the money? So I just wanted to verify that, Derek. Is that about right? Yeah, I think, you know, we left it the last time. I think I had this conversation. There was a lot of, you know, questions about it. Uh, I've been getting and summarizing a lot of different, um, you know, plans that are within our region and, and similar in scope. Um, you know, for example, I, I, the Grand Forks one, they, you know, I think they started with a budget of about 150000 Now it's, uh, uh, they they awarded the the well the uh, the consultant is out of uh, Omaha and it's about a two hundred and fifteen thousand dollar plan. Um, now again, it it's scope we're trying to define it. I, I think um, part of it is we've done a complete overhaul of a lot of our incentive policies, which is sometimes a, a big component of these plans. We've we've um, got a pretty good grip on our road construction projects with Center Avenue being our signature street. Main Avenue was not uh, done not that long ago. So that infrastructure side of it may not have to be a big com component, whereas in Fargo that was a big chunk of change to facilitate that. Um, so we're trying to almost isolate out, you know, what are, what do we truly need? Because we do have some really great plans from the past, um, but we're missing the implementation. We're missing the piece of how do we actually get this stuff done, which I believe is is one of the major major factors in and how we put together this plan. So we'll continue as we. Put we get through this interview process, we're going to um, have conversa conversations about costs and, and kind of pick the, the consultant's brain um, so we have a, a better idea of, uh, of what that ask truly is from a, a financial standpoint. But at this point, we're very grateful for the 60000 and and we'll, we'll be moving forward until we have more information to come back with. Well, my recollection would be that it was never intended that the EDA was going to fund the entire study. I think it was partial funding, so. But you know what? I'll be gone by the time you make that decision, so. Some of you might smile at that. Okay. Uh, okay, any questions for Derek about that? We're excited for your input on it. It's going to be a, it's a big thing. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great deal. plan. Absolutely. Okay, do you want to, uh, anything you want to highlight in the information update, or are we satisfied with paperwork? Or yeah, I mean, paperwork? if you have questions, you know, we, we've sent this out to our investors. This is just the, the annual report. Uh, I've sent it out to about 300 different uh, regional, uh, local, and national uh, groups, uh, whether they're small businesses to, to large, you know, industries. I'm getting tons of great feedback. Again, the energy is fantastic. I've been very grateful to Downtown Moorhead Inc. and, and the board for their support and the city's support and going through this uh, this new agreement that we have. And I think uh, there's still so much more to, to come out of uh, out of our progress. And uh, I think I said it in here, but we're we just we're at this just very very pivotal point for our our community, and, and we're either going to accelerate and, and, and do great things or we're going to be stagnant. Uh, and I think a lot of that comes down to, you know, how we conduct our business, how our, you know, our, our city council, city management, we all have to be pulling in the same direction to really kind of get this done. And, um, and I feel that uh, we're moving in the right direction. So excited to, to, to get 2019 started here and, uh, and see more things happen. Okay. Any questions, comments, anyone? Okay. Thank you for your uh, time, and we are adjourned until next month. Fast